In this presentation, we will take a look at Goetia from the perspective of draconian magic. There are many approaches to Goetia, and the one we use in the Temple of Ascending Flame is specific to our ritual work and different from all others. In this video, I would like to provide a brief introduction to Goetia in the modern context and a glimpse into our own method of working with this old grimoire. First, let's review the definitions. Goetia is a part of the Lesser Key of Solomon, which is an anonymous grimoire containing several books with instructions on how to work with various spirits. The grimoire consists of the following five books, Ars Paulina, Ars Almadel, Ars Goetia, Ars Theurgia Goetia, and Ars Notoria. Let's concentrate on the book that interests us, that is Ars Goetia, which we will simply refer to as Goetia for the purpose of our work referring to both the book and the method of interacting with the spirits that is contained within it. The 72 spirits listed in Goetia are accompanied by the titles, seals, descriptions, and ranks in the infernal hierarchy. The number of lower beings is typically expressed in legions. The list is usually thought to have been derived from Johann Weyer's Pseudomonarchia Daimonum, which is an earlier publication. The whole Lesser Key of Solomon was likely assembled in the 17th century and is part of the Solomonic tradition, a word used to refer to a collection of grimoires supposedly written by the famous King Solomon, who possessed the ability to control spirits. It is thought that the 72 spirits listed in Galadia come from a variety of sources. Many magicians think these are simply old gods and goddesses who became demonized by the Abrahamic religions. They typically use the etymology of spirits like Baal, who may be a distorted form of the Semitic Baal, or Astaroth, who may be linked to the Phoenician goddess Astarte, to support this claim. However, the majority of these names are not connected to any of the ancient gods that we are aware of from historical records. Goetic spirits teach a lot of different domains. Among them we can mention astrology, astronomy, arithmetic, geometry, mathematics, the science of measurement, philosophy, logic, rhetoric, ethics, geomancy, and other liberal arts and sciences. There are spirits who teach languages, including the language of birds and animals, as well as the qualities of plants, herbs, and precious stones. Additionally, certain spirits can tell the past, present, and future. They can reveal the information about the world's creation, the fall of the angels, the secrets of death and discarnate souls, among other hidden and secret things. However, there are also spirits who deal with more commonplace matters, such as showing the summoner a hidden treasure, bring about love, or even force women to strip in front of the magician. Others bestow on the operator the favors of friends and foes, reconcile them, or incite mutual hatred. Other powers of spirits listed in all the grimoires include the gift of in invisibility, secrets of transporting men and things to all parts of the world, shape-shifting, alteration of water into wine, transmutation of metals into gold, or creating illusions. As you can see, a lot of these powers don't sound demonic at all. For this reason, in our work, we approach them as long-forgotten gods, whose qualities and traits were lost with time. It's also important to remember that none of them are referred to as demons in the Lesser Key of Solomon, and magical systems that do so are usually based on a misunderstanding brought on by the Christian conception of evil spirits. Approaching them as demons or adversaries only deepens the prejudice and misunderstanding that arose around these ancient beings over the ages. The seals in the original grimoire are another item not used in draconian magic. Many practitioners who work with Goetia often notice that most of the spirits hate these seals and even refuse to work with the magician, or the effects of this work are not what they expect. This is most likely due to the role that these seals were originally assigned. The process of calling forth the spirits in traditional Goetic magic relies on forcing them to cooperate. The magician summons an angel that is believed to be a superior ruling force to the particular Goetic spirit, and by means of incantations based on the sacred name of God, Shemhame Forash, and the corresponding seal, 
forces it into obedience. The spirit is then compelled to dispatch its armies of inferior beings to carry out the magician's orders. This demonstrates that the seals found in the grimoire are precisely what the name implies. Seals that bind the spirit, limit its power, and subject it to the authority of a higher force. While they were effective in the old approaches to Goedia, they stand in contradiction to the foundations of draconian magic, in which we treat spirits as allies and assistants in our work, not angels of evil who have to be forced into obedience. Traditional magic described in the old grimoires is an art of evocation, conjuring the spirits onto the material plane and into visible shape and manifestation. It provides detailed instructions on how to design the magical circle, how the magician should be ready for the operation, and what equipment and talismans the operator needs for the evocation. Additionally, the magician uses certain incantations and prayers to call forth the chosen spirit and to release it once the task is finished. Solomonic grimoires usually give free summoning incantations combined with curses and sometimes also of lashing the demon if the spirit is not willing to obey the operator. While the spirit appears and manifests outside the circle or in a magical triangle, the magician stands in the magical circle with the names of God and angels inscribed within, protecting him from the demon's wrath and cunning. The spirit frequently takes shape from the thick smoke of special incense. Occasionally, the magician must make a sacrifice or an offering. According to some grimoires, the spirits are either called forth in their actual form or in a commonly human form, since the former is thought to be too horrible to look at. Following instructions, the spirit is either expected to complete the assignment right away or discharged and expected to complete it as quickly as possible. There are plenty of such instructions, incantations, curses and other charms in Goadia and other Solomonic grimoires. In the old methods, the magician had to prepare a circle, seals in gold, silver and other noble metals, and chant incantations using the name of God and angels. This is not the way of draconian magic. We certainly employ a circle in our work, but here it functions as a focus for the summoned energy, rather than as a shield separating the magician from the spirit. The spirits are evoked into the circle, not outside of it. Another difference is that apart from evocation, we also invoke the spirits to experience their consciousness and to absorb their powers. Usually we focus on a black mirror, but occasionally the spirits themselves lead us into a medium of manifestation most appropriate for their energy, like a vessel filled with water, smoke, ashes, or fire, and these are also used in our work. The patron deity of Goetic magic in our work is Belial. The key to explaining Belial's function in Goetia is found in a story found in the Lesser Key of Solomon. According to the story, King Solomon imprisoned the 72 evil spirits in a brazen vessel and then cast it into a deep lake in Babylon. The Babylonians retrieved the vessel and broke the seal that tied the spirits, thinking it held a secret treasure. All of them instantly fled and scattered to their previous homes when the seal was broken, with the exception of Belial, who inhabited a statue and served as an oracle to his followers, serving as an intermediary between magicians and spirits, and the entrance to the power of Goetia. Such is also his primary role in draconian self-initiatory magic. There are many theories on the initiatory value of Goetia, claiming that the number 72 corresponds to the secret name of God, Shemhama Forash, and the spirits described in the grimoire are either dark aspects of God or constitute the body of the adversary. The exploration of the 72 Goetic spirits results in the destruction of the world through the anti-cosmic current of the adversary, while the study of the hidden name of God is the focus of mysticism and is thought to bestow the power of the universe, restore the lost balance, and grant access to higher planes in order to unite with the divine. According to the grimoire, these spirits are powerful entities who can give the magician knowledge, insight, and the ability to create as well as destroy. 
They can also be viewed as self-initiating principles that make up the left hand path's adversarial current. Belial provides access to all of this magic. His role is to prepare the practitioner's consciousness for the journey through the realms of Sitra Ara and protect it from being devoured and destroyed by the immensity of the night side. For this reason, each Goetic invocation and evocation in our work begins with the invocation of Belial for the sake of protection, as well as a method to turn the practitioner into an oracle for communication with the spirits themselves. This technique is unique to the ritual system of the Temple of Ascending Flame and has never been used by anyone else. All of this is only a glimpse into the inner work of the Temple. You can find more about it and our practical methods from our anthologies and by joining the Temple and working with us. Possibly in the future we will also release an anthology dedicated to Goetic magic or Belial as one of our patron spirits. Our work is active all the time and if you want to follow it, visit our website, check out our anthologies, and participate in our open projects.